Thank you so much for joining and welcome to my channel. Today is our afternoon coffee series or boba tea or just regular tea. Um, so feel free to drink along and enjoy this show. Mm. So today I really wanted to just have a really casual conversation about what it's like to grow up with a tiger mother. Um, so it could be a tiger parent actually or anything of that sort. And really it's a 100% disclaimer that I absolutely love my mother. I really fundamentally respect her. She has always been in my corner and has always supported me for with every endeavor that I ever do, regardless of whether or not she agrees with it. Um, and that being said, I'm also an only child, so I have a lot more independence and leeway because I know fundamentally my parents and I mutually respect each other and absolutely love each other. Um, but there is there are some major like advantages to being a tiger mother or educational focused mother or parent again but um, in my case it was my mother she came from japan at the age of 26 and really wanted me to have a better life um, she was here on a student visa initially and um, eventually she started working on her own uh, in japanese stores so stores that cater to japanese customers from japan um, so it was still hard for her to learn English and she ended up spending a lot of quality time learning English uh, on her own. So she was very driven to work hard and um, but she still, you know, couldn't achieve like naturally, I think she would have been an excellent accountant, but it's really hard to start from nothing and, um, you know, to get a degree and all of that. So she was kind of limited. And so she really wanted me to have more options in life. Um, and that's why she was so driven to have me like focus so hard on education and like absolutely nothing was acceptable except A's. <laughs> so I always got really good marks. And I think some of the disadvantages of that is that I actually ended up attending Japanese Saturday school. I was one of those overscheduled children who was busy every single day with activities. Um, I had gymnastics, ballet, I had swimming, I had uh, flute lessons and piano lessons and abacus lessons and uh, Japanese Saturday school and so many different other things and everything was a hun almost uh, everything was free except for my ballet classes so she also did a really good job of finding really low-cost courses and low, low cost activities for kids after school like my daycare program as well um, because we were low income in San Francisco which is a high cost of living location so all of that being said the advantages were that I got all A's the disadvantages were that, like, for example, I went to the Japanese Saturday school, but both of my parents don't speak Japanese. For those of you who don't know yet, uh, my mother is Japanese and my father is American, Caucasian. His family has been here for years, part of his family. The other family is from Germany and they came um, in the 1900s. But anyways, um, all of that being said, I only had one parent in the household that spoke Japanese. And so it was really hard. I felt like I was at a major disadvantage. Other kids who were like me, there were like two or three, um, both of their parents still spoke Japanese, so my, you know, and so I felt like I was always at a disadvantage. I wasn't as advanced as the other kids, um, so I just felt like I wasn't doing as well, even though my mom said I was. Uh, so that was the only time where I felt like with tiger parenting, where it's really focused on education and there's a strong, strong emphasis on education, that there was a disadvantage because I never felt like I was achieving enough in Japanese Saturday school. So I didn't, I didn't like it at all. Whereas like regular school, I was acing it. I was off the charts really good. I got top marks and I loved it, right? I was thriving because that's how I was taught, right? I was taught to get good grades. And if you got good grades, you were a good person, you had inherent worth, whatever, right? But ultimately, I think what's most important about this educational mindset, which I hope to instill in my children too, is that it has to be separate from your worth as an individual human being. Like fundamentally, you are worthy regardless of your educational background, your, your success or accolades in life. Like none of that is valuable. We all live and breathe and die the exact same, well, similar ways, right? None of us are here forever. So fundamentally, your character and your internal happiness and, your, and knowing that you have inherent value as a human being is a thousand times more important than in my opinion, than um, educational attainment or accolades externally or being like the top skier or whatever. I mean, these are great things to have and um, I, I highly value those accomplishments as well, but it doesn't, yeah, I guess that's my Buddhist side where I feel 
Like fundamentally, we all have to have and know and recognize our value and worth as human beings first and foremost and respect others as well for their own humanity. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> long story short, Tiger Mother had some major advantages and disadvantages like for example, let's just go through the pros. Number one, I always got A's. That was absolutely fantastic. I was, you know, encouraged, highly encouraged that to achieve more and really be um, successful in the traditional like career track of going to good schools. And I think that has demonstrably helped me with getting jobs because it just gets me into the door knowing that I have a UC Berkeley degree, I have a master's degree, all of that. Um, those kinds of things actually do benefit my career. So I don't think, you know, college is gone, as people say. I don't agree with that yet. I do think that you can learn on your own and you can take the initiative to do whatever you want. Everything is at your fingertips now. So I think that's the change. Um, that being said, you have to have a lot of initiative and be extremely proactive and make the time and space to be able to learn the things that you want to learn or create these types of videos like I am. It's not easy to have a YouTube channel, for example. Um, so I guess what helps with the educational mother and the tiger mother is that they really help you learn how to be like persistent and work extremely hard and also um, achieve a lot in society. And I think that that is good for like certain personalities. Like for me, it worked really well in type A, all of that. Um, and I think that worked really well. Like if I had a more creative, I mean, not that I'm not creative, but if I had a more, I don't know, different type of personality child, like I would never enforce that. You know, there's so many different types of ways to learn now and there isn't this one rote way of like doing everything. So I don't agree with that part. So that's a major disadvantage. Um, and the other disadvantage is that I feel like um, for those of us who have grown up with a tiger mother or Asian parent, <laughs> not all Asian parents are like this at all, but you know, those parents who are focused on educational attainment is that you never really feel you're good enough, even if you've gone to Berkeley and could have graduated in three years and stuff. Like they're always pushing you to do more and be more and work harder and like you just never stop. So it's like kind of like this rat race of just attaining more and more and more. My mom, you know, like most Asian parents would have been extremely happy had I been a doctor, a lawyer or <laughs> Uh, maybe an entrepreneur depending on you know once I'm successful they would be really happy but ultimately yeah not until I'm successful in other people's minds so I yeah I think that's a disadvantage there's so many ways to live life there's so many different things that you could do you don't have to be in the corporate rat race you could be an entrepreneur an online entrepreneur right which was not accessible to my mother who is now like 65 or so back when she was growing up that was not a possibility but now for people in our age this kind of like online entertainment and becoming your own entrepreneur is extremely accessible and relatively easy to do. You just have to learn it online, right? Like my friend today at lunch was telling me that she just learned how to make a lobster and it was excellent. She like, it, she gar scarfed it all up and loved it immediately. And that's what she, she had never made it before, but she just learned on YouTube. Like there's so many things that you can learn online for free with like, uh, YouTube, there's also paid ones like LinkedIn Learning, Coursera, all of which I absolutely love. Um, and I'm, again, not sponsored at all. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, if I ever am to be sponsored, hopefully, <laughs> uh, I would only sponsor content that I truly value, that I truly use myself. Um, I'd always be 100% honest and transparent with you guys. And, you know, right now I'm still like, fresh and no, not that many subscribers. So um, eventually, hopefully I'll get there. But yeah, just trying to, you know, I really enjoy basically speaking and presenting in public. And this is kind of my way to do that uh, in a non-practice, non-rehearsed form. Um, I just want to create really inspirational and educational content. So hopefully this has been valuable for you. And just to give a quick summary, I think we're at yeah, nine and a half minutes, so perfect time to give a summary and end this video, is uh, a tiger parent is anybody, it could be any background, any educational attainment, doesn't matter, who is hyper-focused on the child's educational attainment and makes them go to Kumon or, or used to be SCORE or like different types of activities outside of school to 
better themselves so they're usually pretty active kids like going to soccer basketball taekwondo gymnastics you know abacus kumon like all of these activities are hyper scheduled um not always but you know definitely an emphasis on educational attainment like you going to college is an absolute requirement like that's not even that's not even a question like don't even bother asking your your tiger parent if you're going to college you're definitely going to college um they have like this one way to live life and that's how they view it so it's kind of it's a very rigid format but i do think it works pretty well for most children who are have who have my personality who are like more type a and very rigorous and want to achieve a lot but the downsides of that is that you never you kind of attach your worth as a human being to your your success your accolades your educational attainment your career right so if you're laid, laid off or you're fired or if you are if you can't get that awesome job or you're not getting paid like two hundred thousand dollars or something you don't feel like you're as worthy when none of that actually matters like i said because that's the buddhist mentality of you know you as a human being are inherently worthy no matter what regardless of anything your, your race ethnicity age sex gender uh all of this right it doesn't matter that is just superficial we all live and breathe and die in you know similar ways so ultimately um that's a disadvantage major one and then the other one is like i was super devastated when i got my first c ever in college <laughs> so like honestly if i had known that it didn't matter yeah i wouldn't but you know at the end of the day it did really help me to have this uc berkeley degree it helped me get into google helped me get into oracle i mean it's just incredibly useful. There's so many advantages to having a reputable educational background. And even if you don't, you just have to work harder, right? Um, and so I think that's like, you either have to work hard at early in life or later in life. So either way, you know, and anybody can be successful, I feel, or, you know, whatever society deems as successful. I don't think there's one path to do it. I feel like there are so many different ways and your career can go like this. It could be like this. It could be like this, you know, and then like that. I mean, it really doesn't matter. We're all diverse, unique human beings and we are all worthy fundamentally. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for watching and apologies for the long video, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you.